You're watching Scores Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're talking about setting up your contact information and personal branding in the Matrix MLS. Now I'm going to take for granted that everyone knows how to log into the system, so we'll start by inserting our user ID and our password, then click login to begin. All right, so the first thing that every new Matrix user will need to do is set their contact information. Now this is the information that will be publicly displayed to all of your current clients and new prospects. So it's very important that whatever you add here is accurate. So to do this, we're going to select the settings option located under the My Matrix tab. Now the My Matrix section is your area in Matrix. Think of it as a repository for not only the things that you've created for yourself, but also a collection of whatever you've created for your contacts. Next, we're going to click on the My Information link. Now typically, Whatever information that's currently there has already been pulled from the MLS roster. So if the field's editable, then you just want to ensure that the default information is correct, as well as update any additional field that may be empty. All right, beside the information tab is the header and footer banner collection. And here's where you can choose how you would like to brand any publicly viewed items, such as printed reports and displays, your client's desktop portal, and if you have one, your desktop matrix webpage. Now, by default, if you choose not to select a banner, Matrix will automatically just include your name in the item's heading. If, however, you'd like to add some personal branding, Matrix gives you the option of either uploading a custom header and footer of your own, or of selecting from one of the available default packages. And from here, you'll notice that Matrix automatically includes whatever contact information is currently saved in the My Information section. But if you'd like to add a photo, you'll need to upload that from this page as well. All right, so I mentioned earlier that one of the places that your branding appears is in the client's desktop portal. Now with Matrix, a client portal is simply a repository for the content that you've already sent to a customer. But because your client may not have access to a desktop computer, Matrix also provides a mobile version of the portal for them to view as well. And you'll notice that not only does the header look different on the mobile device, but the information that's displayed here is also different. So back in the mobile header section of Matrix, you'll need to specify using the drop-down lists exactly what information you'd like to display on your client's mobile portal as well. All right, so moving on to this next section, here's where you're able to set the default contact information that you'd like to appear on the cover sheet of each of the CMAs that you create. In addition to these details, you can also choose to upload a brand new or use an existing photo that you'd like to appear on the cover sheet as well. In fact, at this point, whether you choose to include your personal information or not, you'll still have the opportunity to add or override it during the cover sheet step of the CMA wizard process. All right, so under the portal information tab, you'll find a collection of drop-down lists that contain whatever details you choose to include in the information section. From here, simply select the specific contact information that you'd like to appear on your client's desktop portal, or in the mobile version, under the View More Info link. Now, if you'd also like to include other available links that allow your users to search additional listings, simply select whatever checkbox applies and it will appear below your contact information. All right, so whenever you choose to send any content to a client, you'll also have the option of including a default email signature along with your message. Now this is an HTML-based signature, which essentially means that you can add HTML elements such as links, images, tables, and formatted text. For this example, I'm gonna recreate my current signature just to show you how easy it is to add one of your own. To begin, I'm first gonna click the image button and then select from one of my existing photos that I've already added elsewhere in the system. In addition to this, you can also add a URL that points directly to the actual image stored elsewhere on the web. Next, I'm simply gonna add whatever text that I'd like to include in my signature. In this case, my name, my title, a contact number, And finally, my email address. Now at this point, because my email is currently just text, we're going to want to make this a clickable link for our recipient. And to do that, simply highlight the text and then select the link button. Now if this had been a link to my company website, I'd simply leave it at URL and fill in the website address. But because this is an email link, we're going to change the link type to email and then add my address 
an optional subject line, and finally, some default body text. All right, so after you click on OK, use the available formatting tools to adjust exactly how you'd like your text to appear. In this case, I'm going to use the bold option so that my name stands out just a little bit more. 